I am a Morally Relationship Counselor and Clinical Sexologist, subscribe to my website, eroscoaching.com. That's eroscoaching.com. It's my practice. So you never miss a thing. So I'm doing a reaction video to a news that I saw today. It says here, Orgasm students sue Netflix to block release of One Taste documentary. And um, these students were seeking, according to this report, a 50-minute orgasm, but not 50 minutes of Netflix fame. It says here that this documentary uh, misappropriated recordings from their training sessions, violated their privacy, and unfairly associated them with salacious and implied criminal behavior. Uh, in the US, uh, certain parts of US, um, any touch that involves nudity is considered sex work. So that's why criminal, as in uh, sex work, is, 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 uh, is illegal in that those cities uh so the the lawyer um pleaded the client's case uh, representing clients uh, these are ordinary folks they are just people in the class that thought it would be confidential and private and it wasn't it was never agreed that netflix could use their images and they don't want to be in this so these were students although some of them were uh employees so this uh, the documentary promises never, never before seen footage, and uh, there are claims uh, of uh, sex trafficking, prostitution, and labor violations at the organization. So this uh, founder uh, Nicole uh, became some kind of a messiah, and. It became a wellness startup that was promoted by celebrities like Gwyneth Paltrow and Chloe Kardashian. So pretty much called resemble a for-profit sex cult. So for some members, the company used flirtation and sex to lure emotionally vulnerable targets people work for free and there are people who are ordered to have sex or own meditation with each other or with customers so this person stepped down in 2017 but recently i saw that she launched a new website with a new manifesto blah blah so former One Taste videographer shared his footage with filmmaker and they appeared in this program called Orgasm Inc. for Netflix. So while they signed releases to allow One Taste to record them for future teaching, they never agreed to public dissemination of the material, although one can argue that this is teaching. So one really has to look at the con confidentiality agreements uh, in detail. And of course, this is not produced here and I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot comment about whether it was airtight and things like that. So confidentiality um, is really vague sometimes. So I'm really not sure what they signed. show of hands. So one taste website still has a landing page but diverts visitors to affiliated groups such as Eros Coaching Collective. Okay, so just to be clear, very, very clear. My company is called Eros Coaching. I am not affiliated with this Eros Coaching Collective, which uh, uh, the website itself only came to my awareness uh, later this uh, later part of this year, so maybe like three months ago. So they have training from OM, Orgasmic Meditation, One Taste, and they teach that as part of their practice. So so yeah, the CEO of One Taste and so the CEO, I guess, of now and Institute of OM uh, cons uh, criticized the upcoming Netflix documentary. So 
in this um, reaction video, I can't really comment about the court case because I can't see the agreement. But one of the things that happens is um, that when you are in a position of vulnerability, you are naked and all these things, um, it can feel very violating that something that you agree in a certain context is now in another context. And uh, so the only way for them to stop this is to go to the lawyers. Um, this uh, orgasmic meditation is different from orgasmic yoga, which I teach. Um, orgasmic meditation is a practice where, uh, and they have a book about it as well, um, the person with the vulva, with the vagina, uh, opens up her legs and uh, then her partner, can be a man, can be a woman, uh, just observes how the genitalia looks like and just gives feedback. That by itself can be very uh, healing. Not feedback, but like observation. Uh, that by itself can be very healing to be witnessed in that way uh, because there are a lot of people who are unsure about their own genitals and a lot of shame around our genitals. And so having your genitals being reflected back to you, not really admired and say, wow, but just like, this is what I'm seeing, this is what I'm seeing, can by itself very healing. And then uh, with permission, then they start uh, doing the stroking of the shaft of the clit. Um, and then they ask for feedback and they do what they call is adjustments. So they do this consciously for 15 minutes and uh, the person receiving, the person with the vulva receiving um, doesn't have to do anything, doesn't have to say uh, anything other than the adjustments and um, also doesn't have to say sorry or thank you or anything like that. Just focus on receiving. And so it can be very healing uh, for those of us who are people pleasers who have found it difficult to speak up in the bedroom to ask for what we need. So this can be very healing practice itself. And for the person uh, giving, they call the stroker. Uh, it can be uh, very powerful as well because they uh, break out of the whole um, belief system of, um, you know, I just, I just do what I want to do to you. You just uh, take it or leave it kind of a thing versus like really letting go of ego and taking um, uh, adjustments and so uh, learning how to be of service to someone. Uh, so one is the giver, one is the receiver, very, very clear roles. So I think the whole thing about one taste um, became ugly um, when I think in order to grow as an organization, they were trying to recruit a lot of students and um, uh, sell more expensive courses and um, then all the other things that are said in the article, which I cannot attest to, I do not know, but apparently there's like flirting and prostitution and trafficking and, and all the other um, ugly and uh, shadow side of sex. But the practice by itself uh, can be very healing, uh, done in a correct way. And uh, so for um, I think it's really important because as a, as a society, we don't uh, talk about sex in general, uh, what more about our uh, intimate parts, uh, what more uh, from that sense of uncertainty and feeling vulnerable to then uh, ask for feedback and to actually do adjustments. Uh, I think that practice itself uh, is very healing. So I'm sure those of you who are listening to this must be wondering, oh, what about the people with penises? So uh, they do have a similar um, stroking on the, um, on the frenulum that is the most sensitive part on the head of the penis. So also stroking on the frenulum. And uh, the frenulum is uh, full of nerve endings and super sensitive. Um, it has been uh, regarded as the equivalent of the clitoris for people with penises. And so they do have the equivalent uh, for uh, people with penises as well. But I think the emphasis uh, for OM has been, uh, we women have been suppressed. You know, we live in a patriarchal society. Uh, women are always bending over backwards. So this is a time to honor the goddess and things like that. And uh, so uh, 
over a long period of time, what can happen with the people with penises is that they find that their sexuality is being shut down, that they are being dismissed um, for their own desires and uh, being disregarded. And uh, so there are many, many rumors and stories that I've heard. I, I don't want to go into it. I don't want to uh, end up being sued. Um, but I'm just um, sharing based on what I've read of this article that um, what I know about the practice and the little that I've heard from uh, people. And um, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, something that started off being very inspirational and beautiful um, became warped because I guess when you deal with humans, um, sometimes they misunderstand, take things the wrong way, or there's power dynamics, people being put in charge and all that, and then they just warp their power and uh, then there's, uh, of course, uh, being an organization, there are structures and there are like um, measurements in place. And so it it just kind of um, collapsed, I guess. And uh, so, yeah, it's still available. There are still people who say, I've been, uh, I, I graduated, I'm a teacher and I'm teaching this. So um, I guess um, I didn't mean to... Um, um, undermine um, their work um, they they do hands-on work but uh, for a lot of practitioners like myself we don't do hands-on work uh, we, we, we never do any touch or nudity and I have uh, chosen uh, not to do that in my practice I adhere to the code of ethics of uh, ASAC which uh, stands for the American Association of Sexuality Educators Counselors and Therapists and uh, in the Code of Ethics, and also in the Code of Ethics, uh, as a member of Singapore Association of Counselors, never do any touch on nudity with my clients. So um, because of practitioners like this around, um, there is always this confusion about, oh, you're a sex coach, or you're a sexologist, like, what do you do? Uh, how do you teach when you don't get naked? Or how do you show, actually? So I teach using sexual aids uh, on toys and uh, dildos and um, my vulva cushion um, and uh, then there's explicit um, instructions and language but uh, no touch on nudity. I don't believe that that is the way to go um, especially where I am at uh, Singapore and I uh, definitely want my practice to be above board. So when you look into hiring someone, please look into their credentials, their training, their background, their testimonials, their continuing education, who their supervisor is, um, because uh, there are people just um, just doing what they do and then kind of like uh, winging it and improvising and bending the rules. And so people can get hurt, uh, like, you know, in this organization of One Taste. So uh, just final words, uh, once again, repeating, I'm not associated with Eros Coaching Collective. My company happens to be called Eros Coaching. I've been around for 13 years. Um, this Eros Coaching Collective has been around for maybe half a year, as far as I understand. Uh, maybe the training, the, but the, them coming together, forming this website, um, probably in the last half half a year. So this has been uh, Dr. Mata Tara Lee um, sharing with you a little bit about my thoughts around um, having seen this article. Um, always check um, who you want to work with and uh, boundaries and um, not just do things just because you, you, you are told it's good for you. Uh, it might be good for someone else, but it may not be good for you. Um, always, always, always um, Go slow, trust your intuition. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you stay tuned to my other videos.